I mean, five cal 500 calories per pound. So five times the density of leafy greens, two and a half times the density of broccoli and carrots and all that. Almost two times the calorie density of fruits. And now you have potatoes, oats, rice, beans, squ squ you know, all these, uh, these hearty foods uh, in this area of 500 calories per pound, full of fiber, zero dietary cholesterol, low in fat, high in carbo complex carbohydrate fuel. They're, they're fantastic. And, um, and then you go to, you've got to double that to get to um, the starting point for calorie density of, of meat and animal protein. It starts at about a thousand calories per pound, depending on the type of, of meat. And it goes up from there. Uh, and by the way, that, that category of 500 calories per pound, they call it um, um, unrefined complex carbohydrates. So unrefined, and then just purely refined complex carbohydrates, not full on junk foods, but just refined complex carbohydrates are about 1400 calories per pound. So when you look at all of this stuff, you can easily see that a diet that is based in leafy green vegetables, other vegetables, fruits, um, uh, things like uh, legumes and grains, all of that, all of those different foundations are between one and 500 calories per pound. It's very hard to gain a bunch of excess weight, um, a bunch of excess body fat when eating those low calorie density foods. But you can also see that when you eat too much from a thousand and beyond, too much animal protein, too much refined carbohydrates, too much junk food, too much uh, of nuts and seeds and, and, and too much oil, it's, it's so easy to eat, to way overeat and get tons of extra calories that way. And that's why we have, I mean, 73.6% of Americans are doing that and, and uh, are being you know, clinically overweight. Um, so this is how this plays out in the real world. And so you may say, well, Robert, you know, meat's only twice the calorie density of, of like maybe more boring foods like potatoes and rice and beans and these cheaper foods like lentils and oats and that we kind of think is like really low cost, cheap foods. Okay, you're right. It's only double the calorie density, but how do we consume animal protein? We typically consume it in the forms that I already mentioned, in the forms of burgers covered in sauces and butters and buns and all this extra stuff, cheese, oils. Now the calories just shot through the roof. It's not a thousand calories per pound now with that burger. It's, it's probably double that calorie density now. It probably actually is mathematically double that with all the things added. Or pizza covered in meats and cheeses and oil is just dripping again way more than just the calorie density from the bread and uh, from the meat itself. It's everything. It's how you consume the end product. And so that has to be taken into consideration. And then you have to look at all the fundamental stuff, obviously, the, the dietary cholesterol, the lack of fiber, the, um, the class one or class 2A carcinogens, the, um, the, the, other, the other carcinogens that are part of it. Uh, you got to factor in all that stuff in the totality of the consumption of an individual food. So when you look at these foods, uh, I already gave you a list here of the calorie density, but then when you look at the nutrient density, so basically doc, Dr. Furman's mathematical equation, health equals uh, nutrients per calorie. What are the most nutrient dense foods? Well, are they the most calorie rich ones? I mean, wouldn't that be convenient? Um, wouldn't it be convenient if, if junk food and, and, uh, nuts and seeds and, and, uh, and oils were also the most, uh, nutrient dense because those are the foods that uh, we eat the most of and get the most calories from. Yeah, that, yeah, that'd be helpful, but that's not, it's not the case. So when you look at different 30 different factors of criteria being measured and evaluated, you know, what are the best foods as far as nutrients per calorie? It's foods like kale at the top and watercress and, and, and collard greens and other leafy greens. And down the list shortly thereafter, uh, things like high antioxidant rich fruits um, and, and legumes like lentils, one of the best foods you can possibly eat. And, um, and then you know nuts and seeds and, and grains and all that. You've got to go pretty far down the list on a scale of one to a thousand where kale is at a thousand. 
you got to go pretty far down the list to like, it's like either 57 or 37. I mean, so way under a hundred, you get to the top performing animal based food as far as again, nutrients per calorie and all the criteria uh, you have to factor in toxicity. If it's fish, you know, mercury, perhaps um, lack of fiber, uh, lack of vitamins, minerals, um, lack of antioxidants, all, all these are factors. And so you get all the way down that list, you know, passing Brussels sprouts and, and, uh, and, and carrots and potatoes and all these different things. And eventually you get to, I think, salmon, um, salmon or shrimp or something like that. It's like one of the, the, the top performing animal-based foods. You go further down, you get to like a score of seven for, I think, chips, um, you know, potato chips, and then a score of like one or two for soda, you know, which is just like the worst thing you can you can consume really. <laughs> and so by looking at the calorie density scale and the nutrient density scale, one can easily come to conclusions. Conclusions such as, man, I really need to consume leafy green vegetables in my diet, but I understand that they're not going to provide a whole lot of calories. They're not going to be filling. They're not going to be the foundation of a diet. Even a salad can't be a foundation of a diet or even a meal with the leafy green itself. It's going to have to have avocado, chickpeas, kidney beans, olives, peppers, mushrooms, tofu, tempeh, uh, things like that. It, it, just, it just can't. It can't be the foundation of just leafy greens alone. It just, it, it won't do it. Not enough calories there. Can't do it. And so by understanding those types of things, you can say, okay, I know I need energy before a workout. So what's a good food before a workout? Well, if it's about an hour before a workout, something like oatmeal or potatoes or yams or something like that. That's a great one for about an hour. Why? Because as my friend John Pierre says, when you talk about burning for fuel, that's like a big log burning on a fireplace. It's going to burn for a long time you know, long lasting energy, long lasting fuel from things like potatoes and oats and all that. But if you want something 10 or 20 minutes before a workout, fantastic, or, or mango or berries or other, other fruit. Why? Because it's digested so quickly, it's digested, assimilated. It's, um, it's, it's low in calories, but high in, you know, high in energy and sugar and going to give you a nice boost right before a workout. So, uh, so that's why I eat a banana basically as I'm walking into the gym and sometimes even during a workout, because I want that kind of, that kind of carbohydrate fuel, that, that sugar and boost that comes from, from fruit. And so, and then what do I want to eat after a workout? Well, what do you do during a workout? Well, depending on the type of workout, you're, you're very likely uh, creating micro tears and muscle fibers through resistance weight training. So you're tearing muscle fibers. So what do you need? You need the amino acids, the building blocks of protein to repair muscle tissue. So you need foods. Well, all foods have amino acids, but you want some that are a little bit higher in protein. And what else do you need? Well, you, what else did you do during exercise? Well, you lost um, electrolytes through sweat, you know, potassium, sodium, and a bunch of others. And so you want to uh, replenish the electrolytes lost. So things like water, coconut water, bananas, things like that. Um, doesn't Again, doesn't have to be sports drinks. It can come naturally from food. And, and, and what else do you do? Well, you, you burn carbohydrate fuel. That was your energy source. Uh, carbohydrate is our preferred energy source and then fat and then uh, protein, which is a very, very poor energy source. And so you burn carbohydrate fuel. Now you want to replenish those as well, which is why something like a burrito bowl is fantastic for after a workout. Why? Because it has all those different calories and the, uh, the amino acids, the building blocks of protein from the rice and beans and avocado and uh, lettuce and tomato and whatever else you have in there, largely again, from the rice and beans or quinoa rice and beans is where you're going to get that. You're also going to get the, uh, the electrolytes um, from, uh, from some of those foods naturally. Uh, and then, and then just have a little bit of extra water and, coconut water and some other like, you know, foods that are maybe some fruit that are really associated with electrolytes. Um, and maybe there's some, some of those could even be incorporated into that, into that meal too. And then of course the carbohydrates, which there are plenty of in rice and beans and vegetables that makes a burrito bowl. Fantastic. That makes, um, stir fried vegetables and tofu. Fantastic. That makes a curry bowl. Fantastic. That makes, uh, even oats as if it's a morning workout, maybe, or you like oats later in the day. 
again, excellent um, as a post-workout meal. It makes smoothies and smoothie bowls really effective. And so you want to just tackle all of those things, replenish, rebuild uh, muscle, tissue, replenish carbohydrates, uh, burn as fuel, and replenish electrolytes lost through sweat through performing the exercise. And so uh, kind of in in summary there, and and hopefully some of this makes sense in real world practical application. um, In summary, I would say uh, you, you wanna make an assessment of the best foods to incorporate. Obviously we know to limit junk foods, limit refined carbohydrates. They can still be part of a diet, as I said early on, but you want the vast majority of your food coming from uh, whole plants as often as possible. So uh, I've listed what I kind of consider like the best foods for building your body. I don't want to say necessarily bodybuilding foods or um, muscle building foods necessarily, because some of them are just more for holistic health as well as you go through an exercise program. But these foods tend to be, in my opinion, some of the absolute musts to include into a nutrition program for active people and athletes. Uh, number one being uh, tofu and other soy foods. Again, you can, there's, I think there's something like 40,000 studies done every year on, on soy. It's like the, one of the most polarizing foods um, in the world. Um, and there's a lot of literature um, trying to make soy look like a bad food. Um, it's been consumed for thousands of years by some of the healthiest populations on the planet. And it's been shown to, um, to fight off disease, even fight off cancers, to be very healing food, be very uh, beneficial food in building muscle and repairing muscle tissue and all that. So soy foods, the only thing that I would say is uh, when possible, avoid um, soy protein isolate or isolated soy protein. Those are typically found in sports supplements, protein bars, um, meat analogs, those types of things. So just limit that. They're still okay. They're just not as good as edamame, tofu, tempeh, soy milk. So soy foods are typically one of the best foods you can have. Plant-based diet or not, they're just really, really good uh, for building your body. The next one I would say is lentils. I wrote a 35 page paper a while ago. You can still find it. I wrote it during COVID. Um, I was trying to determine the the cheapest foods, the most affordable foods based on um, their cost, as far as like nutrition, nutritional yield per penny spent. Um, And, uh, and so looking at it again, it's, it's holistic approach of all the benefits you get from an individual food for the cost that you pay for it. That's on um, the vegan strong website, veganstrong.com. That's where that article is. I can't remember the title. Maybe it's called like save money, eat plants or something like that. But it has a bunch of references, including from USDA and all kinds of government websites that show um, subsidies for crops and all that kind of stuff. So you really know how many calories or usable calories and nutrients you get for the penny or for the dollar spent. And lentils were the number one food that I concluded after um, spending quite a bit of time writing that 35 page paper. Uh, Right behind them were other dried beans. So dried beans are just they're really affordable, but their nutritional yield is high for the amount you pay for them. That's the whole point of that article. Uh, dried beans, um, you know, pinto beans, black beans, whatever, and then oats uh, and rice, which are kind of the foods you'd expect, but it's nice to actually have the references and resources and data that, and the evidence that reinforces that. And so lentils just came out on top. Um, and so lentils are my number two behind tofu. And then I would say other legumes, other beans mixed in there as well. And be creative, you know, diversify that. Some are gonna be better, you know, like chickpeas and chana masala uh, and, and kidney beans in a salad. It might be different than refried beans or pinto beans in a burrito bowl or tacos or something like that. So um, the next one, number three, uh, sweet potatoes. So again, that's why I said it's not like a truly bodybuilding food, like sweet potatoes packed full of protein and all that kind of stuff. But it's, but it has anti-inflammatory properties, antioxidants. It's it's heavy by weight and volume. It's it's satiating, and so it it, it plays a vital role in satiety and feeling full and adding volume. Um, it has great calorie density. It has uh, vitamins and minerals and antioxidants, and it's it's a fantastic food. Uh, bodybuilders of all types. Uh, athletes of all types incorporate sweet potatoes. Usually the dark, darker the pigment, the better. So orange, yellow, purple, these type red potatoes, 
uh, are good. Um, same with fruit, you know, darker, the better, uh, just higher antioxidant content. So blackberries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, um, cranberries, uh, foods like that. Um, number four, nuts and nut butters. I already warned those are pretty high in calories, but they also have some anti-inflammatory benefits to them, some antioxidants to them. They, in the case of walnuts, have omega-3 essential fatty acids. That's a benefit. Um, and, uh, and, and, and chia seeds and hemp seeds, I mean, have like omega-3 and omega-6 essential fatty acids. They're alkaline forming. They're, um, just, they're just great nutritional powerhouses. So nuts, nut butters, um, seed, seed butters would be, um, number four. And, uh, the fifth one that I would say, and I kind of have honorable mention as well, but the fifth one that I would say is berries. And that might be a little bit surprising, Robert, they're only 300 calories per pound, I don't really think of building my body on blueberries, but um, yes, you can. Um, fruit is fantastic. It obviously, obviously uh, comes in many different forms, um, you, you know, from the citrus type to tropical type, whatever. In this particular case, I'm talking about berries just because of their very, very strong antioxidant content and for their versatility. So sprinkle blueberries on, uh, on, on cereal, on oatmeal uh, and a salad, um, in a smoothie, in a smoothie bowl, uh, you could just have them any way that you want. It's, uh, I was just walking past acres and acres of blueberries here in Corvallis, Oregon, across, literally across the street from where I grew up, um, on the farm that I'm on right now, as I'm talking to you, cherry trees out there, um, tons of different, uh, you know, strawberries, all kinds of, uh, berries are out here, um, in Western Oregon where I'm visiting, but I would incorporate those. You get them frozen, you can get them fresh. You have them year round. And then honorable mention, um, I put oats in there. You know, um, oats is uh, is something um, that again, is just a, a really healthy part of, they're very much like sweet potatoes in the way that they are, are very filling and, uh, and uh, help with satiety, um, add a lot of complex carbohydrates, um, energy, uh, and, they, and they, in a way, they work as a vehicle to help you eat other things like smoothies kind of work as a vehicle to get more greens in. Right. Um, oatmeal to me, is kind of plain on its own. So it works as a vehicle to get more berries, more nuts, more seeds, more cinnamon, turmeric, whatever. Um, uh, all these different things, herbs and spices to add to it, which can have uh, health benefits and then green vegetables is my other uh, honorable mention. I mean, many people who are uh, elite athletes uh, really rely on, on, on broccoli, asparagus, spinach, uh, foods like that. So, um, so green vegetables would be um, the next one. Mm -hmm.